Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sky Knight. Welcome back. Uh, over the last couple of episodes, or actually, it was one, rec one recording. I had to break it up into uh, two episodes because it got a little long. Uh, we essentially went through the process of setting up a headless virtual machine on a headless server, or, you know, headless server, just through the terminal. Uh, and uh, did that mainly... Uh, just to show you how to do it uh, without having, without using, uh, you know, a GUI at all. Uh, let's flip the script, make things a whole lot easier, and do pretty much the same thing with the GUI. Should be done a lot faster. Let's get started. system and i think we're pretty low on space now that uh, like i said i can see up here actually we're only about 40 percent of the space used so that's that's not too bad i could probably get the other one installed on here as well uh but before we get started we need to install a few things uh the main thing being you know the the gui that we're going to be using to uh create these virtual machines uh, it's called Vert Manager. It's available on, I believe, every Linux distribution. It is available only on Linux, however. sudo vert install. Not. We're not doing a vert install. sudo apt install. And I think it's. Uh, let's actually just close. Close the browser quick. sudo vert. or sudo apt install. Uh, vert Manager. I don't know if there's... Okay, so vert-manager. Yeah, just take all of the... All of the suggested for that. And I believe that we should have everything we need installed. I believe this should install everything we need that didn't get installed uh, when we did the no install recommends, uh, installing all of the initial KVM and QEMU stuff. Uh, if we run into an issue, we'll just have to redo those installs. Alright, so that's installed, which vert manager. Okay. And we should be able to just open it up with a Rofi. Type in vert manager. And you can just opens up immediately. Uh, you see that we have the uh, virtual machine that we created last time, the bare bones beautiful VM dash VM. If we want to, we can open that up, run it. And it, this is essentially, uh, opening up a fake, uh, TTY, you know, within vert manager here. And this should actually probably look a lot nicer or a lot more consistent anyways uh gonna remember with uh doing everything in kitty i think the uh, opacity of the or the the lack of being opaque was causing some confusion with the the console but let's just make sure that the scripts is still mounted and it should be i don't know why it wouldn't be there it is okay uh let's just shut this down okay and let's just walk through the process of creating a new one so, click up here, create a new virtual machine, and oh, actually, we're going to have to install, or we're going to have to download a uh, ISO. Uh, I'm actually going to download the Arch ISO onto here. I'll be back when I get that done. And actually, while I have that downloading, we are going to make a couple uh, storage pools uh, specifically for this. Uh, so let's just cancel out of the installation, and we're going to want to, I believe, connection details. Yes. So under uh, edit connection details, uh, it will bring up. I'll just pop it over to pop it over to here. It's a little bigger. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you will see all of your kind of storage pools. 
Uh, we're gonna chronic create another one. I'm just gonna call it ISOs and say that the path for it is just in our downloads folder. And then I like to kind of pre-allocate uh, the virtual machines themselves. I don't like to let uh, anything really make them up for me. So let's create another pool called uh, just VM storage. And it'll be a directory. Uh, and if you are uh, ever doing like a Windows VM, I would suggest changing this to a uh, disk, like a physical disk, and give the VM a physical disk. That's what I'm doing with mine. Uh, might go over that at some point. Uh, but we're just going to do a file system and the path. I believe we should have a virtual machine folder. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I guess that was already there. Whatever. Uh, so we have our ISOs. If we, I guess we don't even need to refresh. Uh, sometimes if you open up this page and all of your files aren't there, just click refresh and it'll refresh for you. Uh, so under virtual machines, we're going to create another disk. Um, I don't know. BBBTB arch. And give this only five. Uh, you can pre-allocate it if you want. I generally do. I don't think I did with the uh, the other Debian one, but... Okay. So we have the storage made for it. We have the ISO location built for it. Okay, so let's... Close that out. Hop over to here again and... Try to create another one. So we're going to do local install media because we're doing a... Uh, going from ISO forward. And now is when we can check. And my mouse is being a little extra special today. We're going to choose this. And it automatically detected that it is Arch Linux, which is fine. Uh, let's give it 2048 for 2 gigs of RAM. And let's give it now uh, 2. Two of our CPU cores, or threads. And this is what it would be doing uh, if you just let it do it for yourself, or itself. Uh, I'm going to tell it specifically which one to use. So under virtual machines, use this arch. And this is what it is going to be called in the system. So, the, like, so this one is called uh, bbtb-vmvm. Uh, that is where this name would come in. So, BBTB Arch. And then, if you want a UEFI, UEFI install, make sure that you click this button, this customized configuration before install. If you don't want you or if you want UEFI and you don't click that button, you can't change it later. It's going to be legacy boot. Uh, so make sure that is checked if you want UEFI. That's I, just for some reason it's impossible to change. Uh, and one of the things you want to do. So if you want UEFI, make sure that's checked on the very first page here where it says overview. Uh, come down to the chipset. Actually, it doesn't really matter too terribly much. But under the firmware, ensure that you have... Uh, one of these selected. I believe this one is specifically for Microsoft. This one's for Secure Boot, so Windows 11. Uh, I would just go with this one. Uh, and again, if those you don't have those options available, you need to install the OVMF package, which is just sudo apt install OVMF. And it'll pull those down, and then you might have to close out of this try to create a new one and it'll just work for you. Uh, now let's go through each of these tabs. Oh, also, don't forget to hit apply. If you make any changes to these tabs, hit apply. Uh, if you don't, it will... Like if we say make changes here, change to something else. Say, you know, do you want to apply the changes? If you click don't warn me again and then click yes, 
that's fine. That'll work one time. Um, but if you were to change them again and you didn't, like, it, it doesn't remember that you wanted to apply them, but it still won't ask you. So just try to make sure to always click apply. You may be changing things, moving away from them, not understanding why they are changing or why they aren't changing. So if you will recognize this, a lot of these are the options that we manually typed in with vert install. It's just there's a nice graphical interface. Uh, so for the boot options, uh, we're going to want to enable the CD-ROM. I don't think you have to enable the boot menu. Um, I'm going to. Uh, if you don't enable the CD-ROM, it, it'll it just get the, uh, like, no boot disk detected, or no, no something detected. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Uh, so we want a vert.io type. That's fine. If you're doing a Windows install, you're going to need to... Vert.io is probably recommended. You're going to need to install drivers for it on your Windows VM. It's fairly simple to do. Uh, here it's the uh, the ISO for the CD-ROM drive. I've never had to change anything with these. I don't know why you would either. The NIC, uh, if you did the you know default the network, um, you would choose default network. Uh, or if you have a bridge device, you can set up your bridge device here. I'm going to go with bridge. A tablet. Unless you actually are planning on using this on a tablet, you can just remove that. I don't know why that's even there by default. Uh, display spice, just keep it here. Uh, because that's essentially what we want. Sound, don't change it. Console, keep it there. Channel, I don't think you would ever need to change any of these uh, video I like to go to vert IO and USB controller and then one thing that I generally add is a, a watchdog and I probably should have done this on the other virtual machine as well uh, but add a watchdog and generally you want to put the either forcefully reset or forcefully power off I'm going to go with forcefully power off. Uh, that helps so that when you're like shutting down your system and you have a virtual machine running, it won't just wait. I think it's 180 seconds it waits uh, until it decides, okay, I'm just going to shut it down. Uh, this will, a watchdog will essentially live on the uh, guest system waiting for a shutdown signal coming from the host and then it'll go through the shutdown process. Uh, so we add that. Don't need to do anything with these. So the number of read USB redirectors that you have is the number of USB devices that you can plug into it. Uh, so like your keyboard and mouse, those don't count. Those are free, I guess. Uh, but if you want to like pass in your speakers, uh, that would take up one of them. If you want to pass in you know, like a webcam or a, a microphone, that would take up another one. So if you want to add another one, you just add it out through add another one through hardware and add another USB redirector. And that should be all that you really want to change on here. Oh, if you wanted to add a host disk, uh, you could go to storage. Actually, I'm not 100% sure how you would uh, add a file system to this. I assume it's got to be in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. File system. So you'd add a file system. Um, I guess let's... Yeah, let's just add the... Uh, scripts folder to it. Okay. So there's our file system. Now at the top left here, you're going to do begin installation. And this will... This is it. That's how you do everything. Um, yeah, it would be a nice, uh, nice, simple, sweet video.